a light suggested by Noah Lang, who also recently sent some stuff from Walmart, some Christmas lighting stuff, which we'll take a look at in a later video. But this is a light that came from eBay. And you'll notice if I turn it so it's kind of showing the camera exposure goes down, you'll notice that the hoppy goes stable because it's look, doing a longer exposure. And the power of this light is 5.4 watts. It's supposed to be a 6 watt light. That's fine. A 0.5 power factor, that just means that this almost certainly contains a power supply that the bridge rectifier then feeds straight to an electrolytic capacitor for providing the initial incoming supply, DC supply. And that means that all the activity happens at the top of the sine wave, which is why the set of power factor is a bit crap. But that's okay. Uh, the unit itself, the light, stays quite cold. It's also these aluminium bits are sharp. We'll be taking a closer look at them later on. But when you actually handle it, it's the typical aluminium turning. They feel quite sharp on the fingers. Uh, the unit has six heads. It's quite stylish. Looks a bit like an old disco light where you've got the six beams of light coming out. It's super efficient at just that sort of just over five watts for that amount of light. And each head basically contains one watt LED. So uh, let's return to normal elimination. Normal elimination has returned. Let's lock that off and explore. So I shall take these leads out of the hoppy meter. Now it's done its task. And we shall take a look at the light. First thing that's worthy of note is that the power supply, to save space in here, the power supply doesn't have a little box, it's just a sleeved, heat shrink sleeve power supply that is then basically stuffed in under here. And it's the typical power supply that is a current regulated supply that puts a current limited supply out uh, at whatever the voltage of all the combined LEDs in series is. And these LEDs are presumably all connected in series, we'll find out in a moment. Let's find a screwdriver, find the correct screwdriver for this, a crosshead screwdriver. Uh, where is it? It's disappeared. There it is. It's been an interesting night. Uh, it's been an interesting night when I got a bit tiddly on carbonated wine from the last video, which was about the soda siphon, uh, and then went to get my favourite LED head torch and found it was flat, which is a bit odd, and then it wasn't really taking a charge, and I opened it up and found that the battery inside, a very high capacity and very high current output lithium battery, was surrounded by molten plastic. That is going to make an interesting video. So here is the light. It plugs in with this little adapter, this little connector, which means you can change the power supply. This is good. And the LEDs are just all connected in series. We've got the red going to this one, looping through with brown wire into the next light, looping all the way around, coming back to the black wire, and then going here. OK, the power supply is in the heat shrink sleeve. I'm not sure about that. Uh, in a way, I prefer the plastic enclosure. This feels like it would trap the heat. But we shall open this in a moment and take a look inside. But let's take a look at this. This, uh, I should mention that this light came from a supplier. There are lots of sellers selling these. If you look for the uh, uh, sconce and star, LED sconce and star and the six watt keywords, you'll find uh, various versions of these, including the full rainbow of colours, are all one colour, but it doesn't really matter because you and me can actually spot the LEDs in these easily. It's very modular and you could adapt it. You could turn it into a 12 volt light if you wish. So this came from i-shoppy uh, and the full description is, of course, high power six watt LED wall sconce light bulb star colourful spot lamp disco corridor. And it cost... 29 Australian dollars, which converted to 20 American dollars. Or whatever that came to in pounds, not really sure. I, I most likely paid for it in dollars, given the wonders of PayPal. The assembly is very neat. I've come across these lights. Do I have any here? Mm, I've not really got any handy that show this uh, same thing. Uh, let's unscrew this. Let's show you one of them. If you unscrew this part, it's the very common approach to these lights, but with a slight twist. It's got the standard Luxian type LEDs, and if I pull this off, oh, actually, it's different to what I was expecting. That's even better. It's got a flat surface for the LED for the heatsink compound, and then the wires, actually, it has a channel going underneath to allow easy routing of the wires. That is a nice feature. We've got the classic collimating lens, that sits on the end that uh, 
it, although it's clear, though there's no metallization, it gathers all the light by refractive index uh, differences and fires it out the front. It's a really common type of lensing system for these LEDs. And then we get the front housing that holds that on. Now, I have to say, as with a lot of these turn components, it feels sharp. These grooves that have been put in, you could almost cut your finger on them, but not deeply, because I don't think it would go that deeply, but you can feel it actually bite into the skin a little bit. Blech. However, what we're interested in is the fact that this is a very standard Luxian star tile, style LED with the wires rooted in a nice convenient manner and it means that you and me can change this LED to whatever we want and if the light failed in any way, we could, you know, if one of the LEDs failed, we could just replace it. Let's uh, put this on in a sensible manner. I'll just drop the collimating lens back down into here and I'll just point that down the way and... Uh, and then screw it on. Interestingly, it's got a threaded section. Is that... Uh, I'm guessing... Well, tell you what. I'm going to grab a pair of those pliers. And I'm going to loosen that. Let's see how this comes out. Is that just a piece of threaded... Uh, hollow threaded... Standard lighting studding? That's going into here? Let's find out. Yes, it is. That's just uh, threaded in, and then this uh, bit of studding, this hollow studding, goes into that, screws into that, and then the nuts in the back. And because this is machined with a slight curve, it sits snugly onto that, and you can't rotate that on its own. That's very neat. This is just so customizable. That's really nice. If you wanted to convert this to a 12 volt fixture, you'd wire them as two uh, series pairs of three LEDs with a resistor in series of each, just in case you know you've got a 12 volt supply, you're maybe solar powered. The idea of this uh, is that you screw this in onto the wall and you have the usual lighting, house lighting, you have a hole with the wires coming out and either you have a little terminal that pokes inside or you've got a terminal in here. But look, by the time you get the little driver in here and the wiring and that bit of terminal, it's pretty tight to then fumble it onto this on the wall and then try and get those screws in without snagging anything, especially when it's not earth. Let's take a look at the power supply. That's going to be interesting. Is it going to be interesting? Well, we'll find out when we open it up. Let's get some scissors into here. Not sure that's going to work. Let's find a sharp knife. And slit very carefully along the side of the circuit board. Oh, stabby stabby. Particularly with a nice sharp blade. The advantage of using this little power supply is that it is straightforward to get a replacement. Because bear in mind, it'll be a typical... Well, what does it say? It doesn't say the output current. Uh, but you know the output voltage will be roughly 3 volts per LED. There's 6 LEDs, so that's about 80 volts. And they, usually they say in these power supplies they are rated for about 6 watts or so. They have a sort of range that they'll cover. Ooh. Rightio, let's take a look at this. A bit uh, worried that the heat shrink is going to ultimately clamp everything together because they're doing the usual thing. Just put my finger across the capacitor to make sure it's discharged. Oh, that's interesting. It's had a couple of wires, pink and white, on this and they've cut them off and they've tacked these wires on instead. It may have just had loose wires and it was just the easiest way to do it was just to put their own connector on. Um, it has the separation inside by the look of it. I say that, it doesn't look that separated. Hmm. There's the output diode, there's the output capacitor, there's the little road load resistor. It just looks like there's a component. They've, they've got other components tucked under here. I don't know if they're on the primary side or the secondary side. Is it a BP chip? Is it a bright power chip? It is not. It is. An MT7966A. MT7966A. I shall have a look for that. I wonder if that's going to have even a British data sheet or if it's just going to be one of these China-only type data sheets. 
It's a very common arrangement, but here's the thing, that chip is possibly going to get warm, and the transformer will get warm. The input capacitor, the smooth capacitor, 6.8 microfarad, which is quite high, 400 volts, is resting against that chip, and the heat shrink sleeve will pull it, so that chip is going to be heating this capacitor. That could impact the life of the unit. Interesting stuff, very standard. Um, yeah, interesting. Looks like a one chip does all type sort of solution here with a discrete bridge rectifier and then put in a little fusible resistor there and some sense resistors, all, all very standard circuitry. Uh, but that does allow for uh, customization. And as I say, you can make this uh, suitable for 12 volt use if you wanted. It's very nice. Um, it might seem I was going to say expensive, is it really? $20 when you're getting a machined housing like this, where this has probably been a solid block, um, or maybe they've done some basic moulding, or is that front, is it stuck on in some way? Is it screwed on? Is this a tubular extrusion? I don't think so. I see a couple of little lines here that almost suggest the front could have been separate. But um, if that was the case, then it's still a round front that's been attached to a tubular extrusion. And then all these extrusions and uh, components and the wiring, when you add it all up, it's actually, you know, just for the components alone, it's very good value. Um, in hindsight, we should have gone for the ultraviolet one, the sort of deep violet one. I think there was one available, but it, for some reason its price was astronomically higher. But there we go. Uh, super modular Starlight. Uh, that is actually worth it for the components and is super hackable. You could adapt this into many different things. Not sure about the electrical safety of stuffing the heat shrink sleeved supply into here, and I don't know how warm this is going to get in normal use, but at least, you know, you can change this. It's a very standard driver. Uh, even if that means you just tack on the same connector and then put another bit of heat shrink sleeving across it and hope it will last a bit longer than the previous one did. But there you go, it's nice. I quite like that. Just for the machining alone, it's a rather lovely thing.